What's up, Hans family, and welcome. I was about to say welcome to Hanzoween. Holy shit, it's not Hanzoween anymore. Today's tutorial is a Death Do Us Part collab with Alex Faction in honor of Valentine's Day. I've collaborated with Alex many a time. You guys know him on my channel already, or at least you should. He is absolutely amazing, and I love the shit out of him. So make sure to check out his video after this, too. We're also holding a contest with Mayron Makeup, and the details are on Instagram, so make sure to check there. Our idea of the look was to have the light, alive flowers start on my face and slowly cascade down my shoulder and then onto his, and his just get darker and deeper and turn into death. So, you know, get it? Death to us part. We're like alive, then dead. Yeah. So, first things first, I have my eyebrows, my foundation down, and my sassy ponytail. Sassy ponytail always means shit is about to get done. Priming my eyelids a little bit, and then using this Mayron Cheek Powder just to give a light wash in the crease of my eyes, kind of focusing more on the outer V. For this entire look, I wanted to keep the eyes very light and soft and pretty since I am the alive version of the look and Alex's death. With Makeup Geek's Shimmer Shimmer, which is just a nice shimmery beige, I put that all over my lid. And using a little bit of peach shimmery eyeshadow, I blend the shimmer into the pink cheek powder that we used earlier. This step is just so that the two colors that we put down blend together nicely. And this is my favorite part of the look. I'm using a Sigma E11 brush and Exorcism Liquid Lipstick, which is from Kat Von D, to wing out my eyes. After doing this, this is probably my new favorite eye look ever and I just want to wear it every day of my life. Liquid lipsticks are great to use as eyeliner because they dry completely matte. I bring a little bit of that peach underneath my eye and while the lipstick is still a little wet, I use it to darken the outer V of the eye, pulling it down just a little bit and it's pretty easy to do with a fluffy brush. With NYX's Peach Mascara, I coat my bottom lashes, and I do this a couple times because it does take a few coats. Coat the top with some black mascara, this is from Benefit, and pop on my, what do you know, risque lashes, putting a little bit of exorcism on the tips of them. Brighten up your cheeks with more of that Mayron blush, and now we will start with the flowers. All right, so obviously the flowers are gonna be pretty intense. There's a lot to them, so I'll mainly focus on some steps on how to make flowers look realistic. I'm using white body paint and I'm starting with the daisies of the look. I wanted the look to start from white on the face and transition down onto pink so that then it could go onto Alex, which is like a darker pink and red and black. And So I'm just drawing out some baby's breath to lightly cascade on the face. And for any daisies, you could look at a reference picture or just draw out the petals how you think they'd look. And there's little Moo Moo taking a little whiff of my brush. He takes precedence, so I have to help a sister out if you need some love. For most of this entire rest of the look, I am going to be completely custom mixing colors of body paints, mainly just using red and white. To get a light pink for this peony, I just mix a little bit of red mainly into the white body paint, and they're super easy to mix. Just put it down on your table or a palette, preferably a palette because my table is covered in paint still. And just work from your starting point. I added a little more white to this to start drawing out the petals. And this is just to give myself a general idea of where the petals are. Again, look at a reference picture if you need. And I'm only finding the lights of the petals. So I'm looking for the tips that kind of curl over into the middle, adding more white as I go to define the edges of the petals. If you work quickly, you can layer these paints quite a bit and actually don't have to use much eyeshadows. Same with the other peony, I pretty much am always working from the same color that I used before. Just added more white because I wanted this one to be a little lighter and made this peony kind of opening up just a little bit more than the last. Peonies have a lot of these really cool jagged edges, so I'm really defining that with the paint. And while I have a light color on my brush still, I add a little more baby's breath. It's always good to try to stick within your color range, makes it easier to get the color off when switching to another one. 
Now just adding a little more red to this first mixture that we made just to get a little bit of a darker pink, I draw out another kind of lily daisy type flower and dip back into a little more white to add on the highlights. Again, these are just the general highlights. So I just put these where the high points of the petals would be where they would be catching the most light. It also helps it turn not from just a flat piece of piss. For this next peony, I want to do it just a little different so that you guys have different options of how you want to draw any flowers you choose. I'm going in with a little bit more red to the pink mixture and I'm drawing out the peony petals first, making it a little more open so it starts to transition into Alex's death and slowly filling it up. Just do this petal by petal, mixing a little more red to show the darkness and a little more white to show the tips of the petals just like before. Whenever the petals go down into the center of the flower, that's where they would have the most shadow, so you want to add more red there, unlike the tips that do catch the most light. I promise that flowers are really super easy to do if you just work in stages, and take your time studying them realistically to see just how much movement they do have. Really capturing a lot of that movement will make it look super realistic with your light and shadow. Here's where I draw a few little rogue petals falling off. Keeping with pretty much the exact same shape as the other petals, but just making them look like they're withering a little bit more. Just keep going until you feel that you have an adequate amount for your general first round of highlighting. So here's the last way that you can make a flower. I mean, we're not done. We still got a lot of other shit to do. Don't you get me wrong here. But I'm using a split cake, and Alex actually used this in one of his videos just a couple weeks ago. You can even make these yourself, but basically you take your brush along this split cake and you can easily make petals by making the lightest shade face outwards and as your brush goes inwards it just gets darker naturally. It's really easy to draw roses this way but you can do a plethora of flowers. Do you like that word drop there? Plethora? A plethora of flowers. Now taking a little bit of green body paint and a thin brush I just add the stems of the baby's breath. So now that we pretty much found all of the highlights of the flowers, we want to focus on the shadow. I'm going to be using eyeshadows for this step, and for the white daisies, I'm just using Bedrock, which is from Makeup Geek. It's more of a cool toned uh, grayish brown. And since we're working on white, white is already going to be the highlight, so right here we're pretty much just finding where the flowers and petals recede a little bit inwards. And for all of the other flowers, you just want to find a shadow that fits closer to the darkest part of that mid-tone that we first put down. For the peonies, I found a nice muted kind of dusty rose just to add a little bit of darkness, but you can see I'm not using any black here. We don't want to go straight into black because naturally the shadows of these flowers would be the same color of the flower, just darker. Adding in all these extra shadows will just help create so much more depth and in turn helping to make our little highlights pop out extra. Speaking of highlighting, popping out a little extra. Cream paints are great to use on top of water activated paints because they hold their color better. So putting a little bit of white towards the edges of the flowers will really make that color pop. You also want to use the shadows to show where the flowers overlap on top of each other. It's not just the shadows within the flower, the shadows underneath the flower and behind them. And Mumu again, man, he just like was so desperate for love. Look at his little tail. All of my facial expressions too are thanks to being on FaceTime with Alex. When moving on to the rose, I am going in with just a little bit of black and a really dark red, but I quickly am just focusing on the dark red because again, that black can be a little too intense. The flowers are now all covered themselves, but they still are laying on top of our skin, so those need a shadow themselves laying onto the skin. I'm using Mocha from Makeup Geek, which is the most perfect brown for shading, I love it so much, and putting these underneath all the flower petals. With a little bit of yellow body paint from Mehran, I add some little dots for the middles of the daisies, because they obviously need a middle, duh. And using this light pink lip cream from Mehran, which is called Cotton Candy All Over the Lips. I then take my hair down, give it a little brush, a little tease, and that is it. I really hope you guys liked this tutorial. I really love this look. You guys know that flowers are some of my absolute favorite things in the world to paint. I hope you learned a few tips and tricks with painting flowers, and if you recreate it, please let me know, tag me in it, you know. Make sure to check out Alex's video as well. 
he is the death side, so obviously we gotta check out the second part to this. Thank you so, so, so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And I just love the absolute fuck out of you guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!